Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Sheila Bila coming to you with another review of Tyler Perry's Sister Season 7, Episode 11, Gone Girl. Y'all, I just want to thank everybody for their well wishes and their prayers for my husband. Um, He is recovering a whole lot better, y'all. He got to recover because we finna go on vacation. <laughs> we, I am literally um leaving for vacation tomorrow. Yes. And um, I'm going to the Bahamas. We're going on a cruise. And he was like, look, if I got a hobble <laughs> on this cruise ship, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to be gone for eight days. Well, it's like eight nights. And it looks like another episode of Tyler Perry's Sisters is coming on. And I'm not going to be able to review it with y'all because I'm going to be out of the, the country. I'm going to be in the Bahamas. And y'all, I love y'all, right? I really do. And we friends. We we us family. We will never part. But, um. Y'all gonna have to wait. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to wait till I get back, cause I'm. I need a mental break, a mental health break. So yeah, you know it is what it is. But I wanna thank y'all. And you know this Tyler Perry Susan's was was some messy, wasn't it? Look at this. Ooh. So do y'all think that she's unalive, or do you think Gary got her tucked off somewhere with this baby? Cause this is a lot of blood, and it's possible that she probably had the baby. And they just got to sitting up somewhere, you know, or, or, or it's possible that she's actually a gone girl and she ain't coming back no more. Cause apparently, you know, this ain't Gary's first rodeo, but let's go. Before we get into it, I want y'all to please like, comment, and subscribe. The more you do like my videos, the more they go up into the algorithm and more people will start to view my content. Y'all on the road to 6,000 let's get it let's go okay so it starts out you know they went to the flashback gary and penelope you're gonna do this to me what now what she said what she said now nah. she said i'm gonna call the police on you gary because you're gonna unalive me like you did the kim Porter. what's her name kim powder porter whatever her name was i don't like saying because you know kim porter is p diddy you know unalived deceased wife so that's weird when I say that name. So I guess it's Kim Powder. I'm going to say Kim Powder. Potter. Kim Potter. Yeah, Kim Potter. But anyway, so, yeah. And so he done took her and threw her to the ground. And child, she laid out like this. Mmm. I was like, girl, this man is crazy. This is not what we want to see. This is not what we want to see from you. All right. So here we go. Let's go. So Gary says, dang, Dagger, I guess his name is Dagger. Dagger, how much longer do we are, is this going to take? And Dagger is like, you know how long a throne, what is it, a throne job takes? And he said, um, this is not our first time. You've been a messy boy this time. And Gary said, don't call me boy, just here to clean up this mess. So they friends, you know, they get together and they clean up bloody messes. And it looks like Dagger is the one that disposed or put away the bodies. Mm, all right. So, Andy and Jordan, you know, they're over to Jordan's house. And Andy is asleep. And she wakes up out of her dream screaming. She says she had a dream that there was this woman screaming and screaming. And there was a lot of blood. And, um, and Jordan is looking at her like, what? And I'm looking at Andy like, girl, so you have premonitions now? So you can see the future in your dreams. Because, you know, I'm a dreamer. And I can dream dreams and they be coming true. So, Andy, we we got the same gift. <laughs> okay. We super, we super got superpowers. All right. So, Jordan is looking at her like, you know, you was just, you was just, you was dreaming. Andy said, how long was I asleep? He would say, you sleep within the first 20 minutes of the movie. So, then they end up, you know how they do. They end up kissing, talking about kissing and stuff. Talking about, let's go make our own movie marathon upstairs. I was like, I don't think nobody should be making movies right now. You know, the, the actual movies. Because once y'all be broken up, then he's a, a councilman. Then it comes out into, you know, a, a, a leaked actual tape. And everybody in the world gonna know what y'all been doing upstairs on y'all movie marathon nights. So, just, I don't know. Anyway. So, after they... Had a movie marathon night. 
Andy comes into the office. She sees Fatima at the front. They over there laughing, having girl um, talk, talking about Jordan is cracking Andy's back. Meanwhile, Mrs. Marie out there in her office waiting on her, looking real mad. I was like, Andy, you need to go handle her. This woman is a billion dollar client. You sitting over here talking about getting your back cracked. Okay, go handle your business. And so, um... Ms. Marie upset. She was like, um, yeah, you didn't showed up on time. And he said that she didn't even know they was having a meeting today. And Ms. Marie said, um, she doesn't answer to anybody. She makes up her own schedule. Those that that's one of the many things that Andy has to learn about her. And Andy called her Mrs. Willis again. And she said, my name is Miss Willis and not Mrs. Marie. She said, that's her, what she said, her, her raggedy, <laughs> her raggedy bee, bee witch of a crazy mother-in-law and i was like you don't like your mother-in-law dang that's messed up i mean but it happens i mean it is what it is and andy says like why are you here today and miss willis says you know she's trying to keep them bottom feeders them low lies from trying to take her billion dollar fortune and i said miss willis i'm with you you know i don't need nobody trying to take my fortune either all right so sabrina at the office she gets a phone call Sabrina calls Karen and she tells, she calls Karen about the mocktail party and um, about, and also how Danny is not going to like them having a mocktail party because, you know, Danny liked to get her drink on. But, you know, Karen says, well, Danny is always upset about something. So Sabrina says they're like suffering in solidarity, you know, because Sabrina can't drink because she freezing her eggs. And of course, Karen can't drink because she pregnant. And, you know, Andy, she just kind of follows the group. And I guess that's going to be the new name of this group, Suffer and Suffering and Solidarity. And then Karen asks if all the girls was coming because now, now Karen knows that Andy and Danny are now friends with Fatima. They're on the Fatima train. And Sabrina wants to know what's wrong with Fatima. And so Karen is like, you know what? I don't know what it is about this chick. All my friends keep bringing her around. And so while they're talking, Karen's manager, regional manager comes in and Sabrina like, look, my manager here, I got to get off the phone. And so she hangs up the phone with Karen and the manager comes in and say, hey, so are you taking personal phone calls while you're on the clock? And um, <laughs> and um, Sabrina, she stumbles. She's like, um, yeah, but no, but you yeah, know, but the regional manager was like, you know, you can't be doing this now that you, you know, you have to be an example now that you are the branch manager. And I was so happy for Sabrina. I was like, good job, Sabrina. I'm glad that something is working out in your favor out since you went through you know, H-E double hockey sticks and back from this last season of Sisters, you know. So I'm happy that Sabrina, she spoke her mind, she spoke her truth, and now she has gotten a reward. And Sabrina is happy as well. She like crying and everything. And I was, you know, I kind of teared up too because I was happy. You know, Sabrina liked the underdog and I want her to win. Anyway, so after that, since Karen and Sabrina had this conversation about bringing Fatima around, Karen knows that Danny may be the one to bring Fatima around. And when I listened to this conversation, I said, Karen, had you not called Danny, then maybe Fatima would have not been at the mocktail party. But it's almost like you inadvertently provoked Danny to do something that she wasn't even thinking about doing. So it's almost like, Karen, you kind of brought this on yourself. Sometimes you got to leave well enough alone. But anyway, so Karen calls Danny. You know, that's the phone ringing, right? And so here we go. Hey, Karen, you find out who your baby daddy is yet? I said, what? So that's, so that's, so that's, so that's how we going to start out this conversation. So that's how we going to start out this conversation. Girl, hey, Karen, you find out who your baby daddy is yet? Karen said, who's asking? Danny said, apparently you. I said, well, Karen, you are asking who your... <laughs> Karen, you are asking who your baby daddy is. I mean, we all want to know. Shoot, Tyler Perry, what they say, he sisters is the number one cable show in America. So we all want to know who your baby daddy is. 
Okay. So anyway, so Karen said, oh, is it you or your best friend or your new best friend, Fatima? And so Danny says, so who done peed in your oatmeal today? So here we go. Karen brings up Danny bringing Fatima around and calling her disloyal. And so Danny says, I've been loyal to you since freshman year. And then he says, um, we are grown and we can have friends outside of the sister, the sister circle. And so Karen says, how would you feel if I brought around Tony's ex? I said, okay, here we go. So Karen is, she's, she's, she's finding somewhere to itch and now she's scratching the surface, right? And so Karen comes, Danny comes with the comeback and says, you know what? Well, maybe you need to bring her around so she can keep her, <laughs> her kids in line. I said, okay, good comeback. You know, you're going to brush that out. So then Karen got the scratching a little bit harder to where she done broke the skin and it's a little bit of blood. And so now Karen says, so what if I brought around Preston? Now, what if I brought up the woman that Preston married in your sight that he just married <laughs> and knowing that he's still in love with you and you still in love with him? So what if I brought her around? And so this is when Danny gets upset and she's just like, um, Karen, we all don't have the luxury of owning our own business. I'm going to get off this phone before I cuss you out and lose my job. And if I get fired, I'm coming right down there and we're going to box. I said, you going to box her pregnant? I guess she is. She said she going to box her. And so Karen says, so we having a mocktail party in no Fatima. And then Danny really gets upset. And she said, ever since you've been pregnant, you've been thinking you everybody mama. But I'm going to tell you something, boo. If I want to invite uh, Fatima, you better believe I'm going to do it, B. You know, B, which. And then um, Danny hangs up the phone. So Karen looking at the phone like, did she just call me? Yes, she did. She just called you that. And so I can look at this two ways because two things can be true. Yes, Karen was the friend first. And should they respect Karen and her wishes because they were friends first? Yes. But at the same token, Danny is just tired of Karen telling her what to do, what she can and cannot do. And so at this point, Danny is like, I don't really care anymore because you're going to bring up something to hurt me. So it's almost like I'm going to do something to hurt you too. And it doesn't help that it doesn't help that Danny actually likes Fatima. So I can look at this situation. I can say two wrongs don't make a right, but I mean, it's good for um, entertainment purposes. All right. So. So when Karen gets out the phone, well, actually, when she got hung up on by Danny, um, Pam is over there asking her, she all right and all this stuff. So Karen ends up apologizing to Pam. Pam like, shoot, you ain't apologized to me since I pretty much know you. And so that's when Pam, Karen invites Pam over to the mocktail party. And I guess they're going to be friends, friends for real. Because at this point, it's almost like Karen is almost... I, I'm going to get there, but it, I'm going to say this part. Then, then when we get there, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. But it's almost like Karen has really pushed herself out of the super sister circle. All right. So now you have Zach and Fatima. So Zach brings Fatima lunch, right? And they over here talking about their lunch. And then they start having nasty talk. Talking about I can taste you and all this old other stuff. So while they over there talking nasty talk, Danny ends up calling Fatima. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Tell Zach I said hi, Zach. <laughs> Zach Danny said, hey. Oh, okay, what's up, girl? What's up? And here go, um, Danny, I'm going to invite you down to the mocktail party. Oh, okay. So, Fatima like, is Karen going to be there? Danny, I don't care if she, I don't care if she going to be there or not. You my friend. And you Andy friend. And we want you to come. And you coming. Oh, uh, okay. 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 All right. Well, it's cool. So they get out the phone. And then Zach is just like, okay, well, that's cool. I think you should go. You know? Because at the end of the day, Karen and Fatima got great taste in men. I said, is it just because you? Oh, okay. So they do got you in common. <laughs> okay. They're going to be having brothers and sisters too. Anyway, so Zach tells Fatima to go. And she said that Karen needs to accept that they're going to have the same friends. They're going to be a part of the same circle. And pretty much it is what it is. And Fatima said, well, if SWV and Escape can have a whole co-headlining tour before, hold on, 
Hold on, let me read it again. Fatima said, if SWV and Escape, if they can agree to have a co-headlining co tour before Karen and Fatima can be friends. So apparently, SWV and agree, <laughs> SWV and Escape, they got to have a co-lining head. What is it? Co-headlining tour first. And when they can agree, because I don't know if y'all saw the show or not, SWV and Escape, they not friends. They not friends at all. They don't even like each other like that, like that. Because they couldn't agree on the money. Anyway, so if they can agree, they're going to have to do it first. Then we're going to have to do it second. So it's almost like they're not going to really be friends like that. But y'all going to have to be friends because y'all going to be, you know, y'all going to be stepmamas. Hold on. Well, Fatima, you're going to be a stepmama to Karen Key. I mean, yeah, that's what you're going to do. So we all just got to get along. Okay. So... You got Andy, Miss Willis, and you have Hayden. And so Andy is really just giving Miss Willis the whole rundown of her case, talking about they have a financial accounting to look in the husband's background to make sure he's not hiding funds and all that stuff, right? So Miss Willis is just like, you know what? I don't really feel like all this right now. She just wanted this to be over because she said she wanted to be naked on the beach. And so Hayden, he snoozles, finagles, weasels his way over in the conversation telling Miss Willis that um she is going to lose a sizable amount of her estate. And Miss Willis, you know, when you talking about losing money, Miss Willis, like, hold on, wait, what? Okay, now I didn't know your name at first. I really wasn't even checking for you, but now I need you to talk. And so now Hayden is just like, look, your lawyers made an ironclad, an ironclad trust that protects from lawsuits and divorces. And then she he said Georgia state law what he said Georgia state Georgia law states that everything in that trust is protected. And then Hayden says that all Andy has to do is enforce what I, what I write Andy has all Andy has to do is enforce through the agreements. I guess the only thing Andy has to do just is all Andy has to do is enforce those agreements so they can take everything that she has in that ironclad agreement that's already built up. Okay, so now once Miss Willis hears that, she's just like, okay, so Handy, Handy, Hayden is now your co-counsel. And Andy is like, no, I don't need co-counsel. No, 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 no. But she was like, uh-uh, that's going to be your co-counsel. And y'all going to accept all these... um. Commission I'm about to give y'all. And if you don't want to do it, then she's going to go to another law firm. I was like, yeah, dog, Hayden is a real weasel. He just really went in and bogarted his way into Andy's case. I said, yeah, dog, Andy, you got to be quicker than that. Because it seems like, like Miss Willis said, she three steps ahead. And Andy, you got to keep up. Because it looks like you, <laughs> shoot, you got co-counsel now. Anyway. So Maurice at the house, you know, he do he, he doing his fixation job and he on the phone talking about somebody knocking at the door. You know, he talking to the man thinking it's his fantasy. But then all of a sudden he hear a real knock at the door. And then Maurice said, like, what did I manifest that? And it just so happened that, that Sabrina was coming over there to tell you the good news. So Sabrina comes over there and she's on her lunch break. And Maurice is like, do you are you sure you need to be over here right now? Because you know how that white Karen Page is, you know, she will read you out. And so um, Fatima, no, Sabrina is just like, you know what? I'm not worried about Paige because I'm the branch manager now. Apparently there was some rumors that white Karen Paige was running around here doing some stuff with some customers. All right. So Maurice over there looking like, hmm, so you, you branch manager. Okay. So Maurice said, can I tell you something? Sabrina like, yeah. He said, he's the one that told on Paige. He's the one that started, um, that, clocked in started that whole deal about Paige going on the side of the building to have oral fellatios i said was so was that real or fake was she really on the side of the buildings on her knees doing the becky really come on now Paige. why karen Paige? i'm gonna call you slutty girl Paige now anyway so 
Sabrina is happy. Maurice is happy. Sabrina is like, look, now that I'm bank manager, you can get your job back. Maurice said, I get my job back. Now we back together. We back together. I said, y'all back together. Good job, y'all. And then, you know, Sabrina thanks him for always having his back and all that stuff. I said, good job. I'm so happy. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I, one thing I can say about Maurice, even though he be slick with his mouth and saying stuff that don't need to be said, a lot of times, one thing he has done was had Sabrina's back because he was willing to go to jail for her, turn himself in for her. Now he over here <laughs> got page five for her. Okay, good job. So now, back over at the hair salon, um, Pam wants an additional half hour so she for lunch so she can go take care of some business. Why did Pam? Why did um Karen? Call the name of Pam's um what's the what the name of Pam's products rags to be arches. I said what Ra <laughs> from rags to <laughs> I said ain't nothing in that sentence is good. It could <laughs> okay okay Karen and so Pam is like it's from Rooster Riches. I said well whatever you want to call it. So. Karen is like, why do you need an extra half hour, you know, for lunch? And so that's when Pam says, you know, I when I um spoke with the person that Andy, when I spoke with the lawyer that Andy hooked me up with, he told me that I need to go down and get me, um, I need to go and get a business account so he can get a, she can get an end. EIN number and all that stuff for tax purposes because she, Pam really is really serious about her business. She wants to be an entrepreneur, right? And she says she wants to be legit. And so Pam says that she wants to be like her role model. And Karen, like, who your role model? Who your role model? She was like, you know, Karen naming all these other people like Oprah and Rihanna, whomever. And Pam says that she, that Karen is her role model. And she says she saw her build this place up from the fire when she was being when she was pregnant with twins. And she said she put on her superwoman cape and she did the thing. And so when when Karen heard her say that, that really got Karen emotional because she felt like, well, dang, I didn't know that I was that important to you. And she was like, you know what? Just go ahead and take all the time you need. And I mean, that is a big thing, though, for you to build yourself up from literally the ashes to ashes, the dust to dust. Like, that's huge. And I know she had to beg, beg borrow, and steal to pay her rent every month. But at the end of the day, she still got a rent for the next month that she got to go with. But shoot, child, I mean, hey, it seems like <laughs> Lady Luck is coming her way because at the end of the episode we'll get there but yeah but i think that is a good thing too you know i was looking at karen like good job karen so karen is doing good in her business sabrina is bank manager andy about to be um that partner okay danny fatima going to law school danny come on they need to write danny doing something shoot because she's talking about if she lose her job she's gonna go down there and fight karen Shoo. Anyway. And so now, um, I mean, this scene pretty much won nothing. Tony, Tony give Danny back her pearl. Well, it ain't her pearl necklace. It's some, it's some real pearls. She got real pearls, y'all. Mother of pearl. They real. And then they get to kissing and they get ready to do it on top of the desk. Yay. All right. So now Andy is back at the office, of course. And Fatima comes in and trying to understand what's going on with Andy. So while Andy is telling Fatima about what Hayden did, Hayden walks in and tells Fatima to leave. I'm like, you just can't tell nobody to leave, Hayden. But Andy said, well, can I please talk to Hayden for a little moment? So that's when Fatima ends up leaving. And so Hayden makes himself comfortable. He said, I'm talking about now, can you catch me up to, sp to speed with this case? I said, this Negro. Oh, man, I just want to pop him on the side of his ear. But anyway, so Andy is just telling Hayden, you know, I see how you slithered, slithered your way into my case. You had to attach yourself to some high profile case, which is Miss Willis. But she said, I see what you're doing and you're not going to get that new partner seat. You're not going to get it. And so Hayden come back and say, I mean, 
it is what it is pretty much because if you don't get that seat, then what he said, he said, if he said, I will, Andy will not get it. <laughs> And she could get supported by her new boyfriend that just got cleared of that chest to chest the child. You know what the rest say or whatever. So I guess he's saying you, you you ain't really too much worried about the seat because you run around here chasing the Chester that got that's not a Chester no more. The councilman. I really don't know. But yeah, they just went back and forth. And Andy mad. But Andy, I'm telling you, you need to be three steps ahead. These people are running around here being vultures and you just letting them into your life and they just doing whatever. Anyway, so Jordan is interviewing this white man. I really didn't get his name. I, click, click, Rick. I don't know. I, I He said it too fast. I guess his name, his first and last name rhymed. I couldn't catch it. Anyway, so he come in. He interviewing him to be a part of the campaign. Talk about how he was in the military, how he got a Bachelor of Science, how he protested with Black Lives Matter. And um, he just don't look like a good old boy. He he actually looked like a snake. Anyway, and then they bring up Andrea Barnes. Oh, that's your girl? Yeah, that's my girl. Oh, okay. And Gary said that he, and Gary hired him. Talking about he was hired before he even met him. I was like, well, get, um, no, hold on, wait. Jordan said that he hired that the white the white dude, and um Jordan said that he hired him before he really even met him, and so then they receive a phone call, ring, 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 and it's white greasy boy. He do look a little greasy, don't he? He look shiny. Maybe it's just a bad picture. But anyway, so that dude calls Gary's friend guy. I don't remember his name either and say that everything is a go and so apparently the guy that jordan just hired is going to be it's the fish what's the word is the plant that gary and his friend hired to disrupt the campaign for jordan so child these people are slithering in spaces i mean god dog y'all gotta keep y'all guard up y'all being too Ooh, y'all got to be tight with this stuff. Anyway, so now you have Rich and Sabrina. Today must be the gift of giving because Tony gave um, Danny a pearl necklace that was real. And now Rich is giving Sabrina a bag because she's the branch manager now. Now she got to have a bag, a new bag, briefcase, suitcase. That thing is big. It looked like a briefcase. She's going to put her laptop and stuff in there or whatever. So Sabrina is happy. She got the case that she wanted. Then they end up kissing. Danny comes in, see them kissing. They end up going over there to sit down. So um, Rich says, you know, the place is just going to be for them. It's shut down only for the girls, only for his girl and her. The place is shut down for his girl, which is Sabrina, and her girls, which is everybody else. And so... You know, um, Danny is just like, oh, that's what's up. You know, that's cool, whatever. And so when they start to sit down, Fatima comes in first. Then Andy walks in and said that she didn't know Fatima was going to be there. They could have rolled together. And Fatima was like, um, mm -mm, no, because ain't no telling what, what could have happened, especially when Karen going to be here. But Danny reaffirms Fatima like you engaged to Zach now you are part of the sister circle I mean it is what it is and so Karen walks in and say oh is that so girl yeah so she's sitting there she about to she about to pull her drink up I mean it is what so now Karen talking about don't come in with that don't come and do that and so here goes Sabrina so much for not drama <laughs> so much for no drama I said girl the minute all of them got together it was gonna be drama Sabrina I mean, they're going to have to have growing pains. And it looks like it's a lot of pain before the growth. So while they over there about to get it popping over at the juice bar, you got baby Michael and Zach. Hey, baby Michael, what you doing? Your daddy finna read you a story about Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Lion. Oh, and baby Michael is so happy. He's like, I'm here with my daddy and he tickling me and he reading me books. I said, your daddy is reading you books, Michael. 
Soon you gonna be reading too. Hold on, wait. Soon you gonna be talking. We gonna say, hey, daddy. I'm gonna say, oh my God. Baby Michael, you gonna start talking soon. Oh my God, I'm so happy. It's cool. Just, yeah. With your little shirt on. <laughs> all right, so back over here at the bar. Now this is when it all goes down, child. This was a whole mess. All right. So all the girls are together, right? And so Danny over here talking about these drinks. Like what is in these drink plups and pup and all these old other stuff, right? So she's trying to stir her drink up so we can get loose, but it ain't getting loose fast enough. So then he said, these drinks got to get a little loose. And Sabrina's like, what you mean loose? And then Andy pulls out, the, excuse me, Danny pulls out the alcohol and get the point. And so then Fatima pulled her cup over there like, you can pull me some too. And I really kind of felt like that was kind of rude to Danny because I was like, if you know the main purpose is to celebrate Sabrina and out of respect for Sabrina, she wanted everybody not to drink and you did it anyway. I just thought that was real rude. That was because you're at my party. I invited y'all. You're going to do what you want to do. All right. So Sabrina says, Danny, you're supposed to stand in solidarity with, with her and Karen. And so Danny said, well, shoot, she did for the first part of the day. Now she got a drink. Okay. So Karen says that, um, Sabrina, Danny is just selfish. It is. She's just selfish. And so Danny says, so I'm selfish. Danny says, so she's selfish because she decided, because Karen decided to let Zach knock you up. And I'm not supposed to drink. Okay. So stop acting so evil before you mark them babies. I said, yeah, Karen, you don't need to be acting evil because them babies going to come out as some little gremlets. Like, don't do that. Now, you already told the baby they was going to be little bad kids. They're going to be coming out looking and acting like little gremlins because you being real mean right now. Okay. And here go Fatima with the baby that might not be his. I said, well, uh, you must not see the last part. <laughs> Fatima, you didn't see the last part of this episode, but it is what it is. Okay. We're going to keep going. And Karen said, what you say? And Fatima said, well, if I wanted you to hear it, I would have said loud. I said, well, you shouldn't have said it at all because she still kind of caught it with her ear, you know, she kind of see a cloud. So, Fatima, if you gonna say it, say it. Shoo. Anyway, so then Karen talking about you got some nerve coming to my girl to um to my girlfriend's event questioning the paternity of her babies. I was with Zach for three years, and this be gonna come in here. I ain't gotta explain nothing to you. I was like, I mean, you really don't. But at the end of the day, she want to find out if your baby daddy gonna be her baby daddy. Her baby daddy, her husband, her baby daddy, be her husband with the baby daddy. Anyway, they just, she's just trying to find out if they are related. All right. So then Danny says, just because you don't know, just because we don't know, just because we don't know how the father of them, just because you don't know who the father of them children is, don't make you um, virgin Mary. And so this when Karen stands up and she was like, you know what? So this is why she don't know if she can be friends with you. She's talking to Danny. And then she says, you let Zach stay with you while they was having problems. And now you over here bosom buddies with this B who was trying to stop him from being a father. And Fatima is like, that's a lot. And then Pam is like, it's not. But I'm just like, first of all, it's not a lot. And Pam, you don't even know what's going on for you to even be commenting because you're only hearing what um Karen is saying. So Fatima has always been supportive of Zach being a father. She just wanted to make sure that Zach was the father before he could start being supportive, which makes sense in my head, right? So Karen, excuse me, so Pam, it is a lie. <laughs> All right. And so Fatima says, look, I'm sparing Karen, but Pam, you can get it. Like you calm down. And so Pam said, Google me. I'm an entrepreneur. I said, girl, what they got to do with this conversation? We happy for you and all, but dang, I mean, you going to tell everybody you was an entrepreneur. And then Sabrina is just like, well, shoot, can we get along? I mean, what? So Karen then says, Sabrina, you can't fix things. Maybe this friendship has run its course. You already, <laughs> talking about, they're going to tell Fatima, talking about, you already got my man. Now you can clear up a few a few more loose ends with these friends so she was like so you got my man now you done got my friends 
I mean, what more can you take, really? And then she stands up. She's like, and with these babies on the way, I don't know if I want to be worried around with people that clearly don't care about my feelings. Come on, Pam. I said, get dog. Pam, you going to go while she talking to you like that? But Pam gets up and she go. And then <laughs> while Pam is leaving, she go, roast the riches, bees. I said, oh, okay. Say it with your chest. And then here go Fatima. Never heard of it. Pam, you will. I said, we will because Pam is going to blow up with roast the riches. I believe it. I see it in your future. I'm like Andy. I can see. Shoo. Anyway, so Sabrina is just sitting there looking sad because she was like, dang, Danny. I mean, you don't want to run after her. And then he said, I'm tired of trying to be friends with somebody who only wants to see the evil in me. And then she said, maybe this right. Maybe this friend has run his course. And Andy is like, you know what? You don't mean that. She don't mean that. You all just got to calm down. And I can understand Danny in that moment because it's almost like no matter how good Danny tries to be, Karen always brings up her flaws. And she don't like that. She's like, I'm sick of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You think it's a game? Andy, it's not a game for me. I'm sick of her. Her and her twin babies. Well, her two different babies. Ooh, I ain't, let me, we going to get there. All right, because I'm jumping ahead of myself because I was feeling like Danny in that moment. Okay. But I was feeling like Karen too. Y'all want to bring up all this woman over around here. Shoot. And I can't even have my babies in peace. I mean, it's a lot going on. Two things can be right at the same time. That's all I'm saying. I know y'all be on team Karen. I mean, excuse me, on team Danny, but I can see. <laughs> I can see too. And I mean, that is true. You know, Fatima ain't really got no issue with Fatima don't really have an issue with Karen. Karen has the issue. And you can hear it when she's talking about you, you, you got my man. How can she have your man, Karen? Fatima was like, your man. But your quote unquote man is engaged to, to somebody else. Come on, Karen. I be wanting to root for you, but then you say stupid stuff like that. Anyway, let's keep going. So Andy gets a phone call, thing, 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 right? So she go over there in the corner and she's Jordan. Have you seen her from Penelope? You know, I've been trying to call her. The phone is just, it's just ringing. It's, 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 she ain't picking up. It's just going straight to voicemail or whatever, whatever. And so, um, they get out the phone. She said, Andy said she going to try to see you, whatever, whatever. So they get out the phone. Andy go over there and tell Fatima, Hey y'all, I'm sorry, Sabrina. You know, I'm sorry that we really couldn't celebrate you in this moment. But I got to get ready to go. And Fatima, can you come with me? So y'all really should have rolled together. I mean, really, y'all should have. So anyway, can you go with me? And she said, yeah. So they get up and they go. So this is the part. And for some people in the comments, when I did my um trailer review, some of y'all didn't understand what I meant when I said, I really don't understand why. Fatima and Andy are going over to see Gary because Gary is at the point he's he's over the idle threats and unless you're going to do something to him why are y'all threatening him because he's calling a bluff every single time if you're not gonna take that knife and go across his neck why are we over there you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't want nobody to go to jail. I don't want Fatima to go to jail or nothing like that. But don't go over there threatening nobody if you're not going to do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Let somebody else that's, that can really do something, do something. Let Call Madam. Call somebody that can really make something happen. Because at this point, Fatima, you got too much to lose. Andy over there scary and crying and she got too much to lose. And Gary don't care. He don't care if he lose it all because he seems like he almost ready to die. Shoot, he Tupac, he ready to die. No, he, he ain't no Tupac, but he ready to die. Anyway, so they go over there. Andy, where is she? Here go Gary, where is who? <laughs> Fatima, stop playing dumb, you know. And Gary said, um, can you get your minion, Andy? Because I do not speak Rockwiler. I don't care what y'all say, that was funny. I did laugh. I was like, ooh, Rock. Because Fatima do be acting like a pit bull in a skirt. And she really do do anything, Andy. I'm telling you, it's like Fatima is Andy's muscle. And it's weird because I'm like, Fatima, you don't need to be nobody muscle. Like, you that girl. Anyway, so Fatima bring out her knife. Ah. And Andy, here go Gary. Higher. Go up a little higher. And that's why I'm like, so he think this is a joke. He playing games. And then he calling Andy delusional. Andy talking about, you knew I was helping Penelope get away from you, Gary. 
she's the mother of your child. I can't believe, you know, she going off and all this stuff. If you know what's good for you, you will tell us where she is right now. Gary ain't caring about nothing that them girls saying. He could care less. He don't care. That's what I'm saying. Y'all went over there and just did a whole bunch of hot breath. Now, Fatima, you should have called Madam or somebody that you know that could get this job done and do what they need to do. Because this right here, this ain't working. It ain't. Sorry. All right. So this is the end of the episode. Karen Chad, she stretched out on her couch. She get a phone call. Thring, 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 right? So it's Pam. Hey, girl, I'm just calling to see how you're doing. Oh, thanks, girl. I'm doing fine. And you know what? Thank you for having my back out there. Girl, you know, anytime, it ain't no problem. You know, I got your back. It's cool. It's cool. Especially when you let me take off for lunch. You know, all them hours go get my business, um, my business account and stuff set up. You know, you a good boss. You super woman. Oh, okay. Well, girl, well, I was just calling to check up on you. All right, then I'll call you a little later. All right, bye. See you in the morning. Okay. So then she put the phone down. Here we go. Thring, 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 thring. Here go Karen. Girl, what you want now? You forget. Hello, excuse me. This is Dr. I don't know, McIntyre. I don't know the doctor name. This is Dr. Doctor. Oh, oh, hi. You know, we got the results back from the anesthesiologist and we just wanted to let you know. And I'm pretty sure you're a little ain't, um, auntie to know about the results. We sent the digital results, results to your email. Oh, here go Karen. I already know. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> I know it's just a formality. I already know who the father of my child is, of my babies are. It's just a formality. And here go the doctor. Oh, you do? Okay, well, uh, I know Zach is the father. Oh, you are right. Zach is the father of one of your um, of your babies. Oh, what, what? Hold on. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but it is a possibility. I mean, it's very rare to have fraternal twins. And they do have two different fathers. It's rare, but it didn't happen to you. Karen said, oh. Okay. So I got two baby daddies. One for the home and one for the road. Mm, one for the church and one for the school activities. Hmm. I got two baby daddies. All right. Good for you. Which we already knew. This was the worst kept secret of all. I said she had two baby daddies long, 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 long time ago. But you know how Tyler Perry is. He done drug this out. But I'm finally glad that we know that, you know, she got two baby daddies. One Aaron and one Zach. Yeah, go back to the picture I posted. How do y'all feel now? Do y'all feel okay that, I mean, one of them babies is Zach? Because I know a lot of y'all was, you know... Saying, ain't none of them babies, Zach. Ain't none of them babies. And then some of y'all was like, one of the babies, Zach, and one of the babies, Erin. We already know. I'm sick of this. That's what some of y'all was saying. And then some of y'all was saying, mm -mm, ain't them one of them babies, Zach. Them babies is Erin's. And then some of y'all was saying, hey, them babies ain't Zach's or Erin's. Them babies, Rico's. I said, <laughs> I said, who is Rico's? Rico, that's the dude that, you know, Karen be calling when she be wanting to get her itch on. You know, sometimes Cooch be itching. She need Rico to scratch it. You know, he that dude. I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, y'all, let me... <laughs> Some of y'all said, you know how it is when you get pregnant, you have two fraternal babies in different sex, and it could be one baby in this sack and then one baby in the other sack and then they could be two different baby daddies. It happened. It happened on God and life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but y'all be slurring up and down. Y'all be knowing. Some of y'all was right though. I ain't gonna lie. Some of y'all was right. Some of y'all was with the with the whole. Yeah, it's two baby daddies, which we... The, the majority, the masses thought that, but it was some of y'all, yeah. Ain't now one of them babies said, I don't care what nobody said. I said, well, what you gonna say today? Because y'all just found out. I mean, it is what it is. Now we all got to get along and be happy. All right, so can do y'all think she can get child support now so she can pay her rent? <laughs> so she can pay her rent on time? Is it okay? Y'all not going to be happy that she getting child support either, huh? Zach ain't got to take her. <laughs> oh, my 
God, this is hilarious. Y'all funny. I love, when I tell y'all, I love y'all. I love talking to y'all in them comments because some of y'all be real in y'all feelings. Y'all be really for real in y'all feelings. And some of y'all just be real cool. You know what I'm saying? Because I be real cool. You know, I try to look at the whole angle. But anyway, so we got the answer. We got the answer and we found out. But apparently it looked like it's going to be another episode. And I'm not going to be able to talk about it with y'all. And I feel real sad about it. But I got to get my mental health right. I do. I got to. I can't. I don't. I don't want to think about nothing. But eating. And going to sleep. And getting into the ocean. And praying. And calling on the name of Jesus. And just being healed inside and out when I get in the ocean. But that's all. Y'all have a great day. And I love y'all so much. And we're going to talk again. And y'all, bye. Like, comment, and subscribe.